This morning, our School Matters series looks at one of the biggest challenges for educators across the country, chronic student absence. During the past school year, around 16 million K-12 students nationwide were considered chronically absent. That's when a student misses 10% of school days or more for any reason. This year is not expected to get any better. Psychologist, psychologist Lisa Damore is author of The Emotional Lives of Teenagers, Raising Connected, Capable, and Compassionate Adolescents. She joins us right now. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I'm glad to see you. All right. So you say that you are incredibly concerned um, about what's happening across the country. I am. I am so glad we're covering this because those rates of chronic absenteeism that you just mentioned are twice what they were before the pandemic. So it's been a very steep rise. Uh, and you mentioned anxiety being the primary reason why kids want to stay home. But you also say staying home for a long period of time isn't a good thing. It is not a good thing. So there's a lot of different reasons why kids don't go to school, different reasons for different kids. Of course. Probably one of the most universal is they're anxious about something. Mm -hmm. And so when kids are anxious, sometimes we think like, okay, just stay home today. But the problem is that avoidance feeds anxiety. When you avoid the things mm. you fear, you actually become more anxious. So the kid might feel good the day they stay home, but it becomes that much harder to go back the next day. So as parents are watching right now and listening, what can they do to help? So what they can do is they can figure out how to get their kid back to school. That might be helping them bring their anxiety under control, figuring out what the barriers are, if they're worried they're out of the step academically, maybe helping them shore up their academics, if they're worried about who they're going to sit with at lunch, talking with the school about making sure they've got someone to be with. The key is that if we stay home, our fears dominate. What we can imagine our fears are usually worse than the reality. So a kid who stays home might be thinking, I'm going to be out of you know, step in class. I'm not going to mm. have anyone to talk to. And if they go to school, those fears can be tempered by a helpful teacher, kids who are glad to see them. If they stay home, the fears win the day. Now, you also say there are also other variables like um, financial, social, and racial inequities. Um, how do those play a role in kids not showing up to school? So the rates of school absenteeism are higher in areas that are economically disadvantaged. And a lot of our data are still anecdotal. But what we know is that even in remote schooling, a lot of those kids didn't go to school at all. Hmm. They might not have had Wi-Fi. They may oh. have gone back to work for their families. They may have been that. caring for younger children. And so they fell very, very behind academically, which of course makes it hard to go back. Yeah, it could be overwhelming because they might be helping out playing an adult role Absolutely. in their homes. Um, what can be a, a, a addressed to to, to deal with that aspect of it? Well, we need to throw as many resources as possible to help those kids get back on track. And, and this is something that happened across the pandemic, which was that inequities that were in place before were exacerbated by the pandemic. The other thing we can do is that we need to make teaching a profession people want to be in. We need to I make agree. it desirable, right? Having a great teacher who's good at connecting with kids goes so far at helping kids come to school, stay at school. So teachers need support to have their jobs be jobs that anyone would want to do so that we have real pros in there who get kids, like kids, and know how to connect to them. Because teachers are our heroes. That's they are sure. our heroes. They are working so hard. The knowledge you give us is so valuable. Thank you so much, Lisa <laughs> so Moore. All right, ahead, chef and humanitarian Jose Andres and his team have served millions of meals in disaster zones. 